Hey, Thomas Costello here for another episode of Tax Smart Q&A. And in this episode, I'm going to answer the question, can the same customer stay at your property multiple times if you're trying to use the short-term rental loophole? Well, before I dive right into that, if you do like this video, be sure to hit that like button to help get this video into the hands of more real estate investors and help them become tax smart. So as you may already know, if you're trying to use the short-term rental loophole to turn losses from your rental properties non-passive so they can offset the taxes from your W-2 or other active income, you generally need to have an average stay on the property of seven days or less. So then this begs the question, well, if I need to have an average stay of seven days or less, can I have the same tenant book leases back to back as long as each lease is seven days or less? Will that count? Will that qualify for the short-term rental loophole? And well, the answer to that question is, of course, it depends. So a period of customer use is considered a period in which the customer has a continuous or recurring use of the property. So if the tenant books a stay at your property in March and then does the same thing again in August, we believe that is two different periods of customer use because they're not continuous or recurring. However, if your tenant books back-to-back -back stays in the, in the month of March, then that would be considered the same period of customer use throughout that entire period because they have the right to use that property during their stays, during their back-to-back -back stays during that entire time, making it one continuous use, and therefore it would not qualify for the short-term rental loophole. So the bottom line here is you can't have the same guest uh, book back-to-back -back leases with average stays of seven days or less and still use the short-term rental loophole because it's generally going to be considered one continuous stay, and it's going to blow the short-term rental loophole for you. That's all for now. If you do want to catch more episodes of Tax Smart Q&A, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future releases. Also, if you do have questions about short-term rentals, be sure to drop them in the comments below and we're going to go ahead and answer as many as we can. That's all for now and we'll see you on the next episode of Tax Smart Q&A.